Hi, I'm Dino with Dino RC. And today I'm going to talk about uh, comping your trucks just a little bit. Go over the score sheet that I used at my comps that I put on for Dino RC. So people can kind of understand and some of my team drivers that put events on around the United States um, will be able to also score the same way. So to start in the first column, we got the driver's name, pretty simple. Then we have the bonus gate. We have a reverse, winches, gate hit, rollover, repair, reposition, DNF slash DNS, gate progression, time, and total score. So you also have a point that goes with these. So the bonus gate is negative five if you clear a gate and plus five if you hit a gate. So for an example, this is a gate. <laughs> and this is a gate. And here is our monster truck. So if you have a bonus gate and you clear it, then you get negative 10. If you hit this one and go on, you would actually get a zero because you get plus 10, plus five for this one, minus five for this one, which would give you a zero. If you fall around and hit this one and then hit this one, then you would get a plus 10. The way that we... Um, the way that we score, we'll bring out a couple smaller gates for you. I don't know if you can see those or not. Maybe we better keep the big ones. But the way that these, we score the gates is each side is worth five points. So it's pretty simple math. And this is for all the gates. So each gate is scored individually. And you have a plane, which is the area between the gates. In order to get progression and be able to go from gate one to gate two, then you have to be able to make it through this gate. You can't go around the gate, can't go over top of the gate, not and get full points. So here's how it works. So if this is gate one and you come through and you hit gate one, then you'd get a plus five for hitting this gate, and you would receive a negative five for clearing this gate. And once both sets of tires clear, a front and back from both sides clear the plane, then this is progression. If it's clear, if it's a clear one. All right, so let's say that you, you come up on I'm going to switch these little ones so it's a little bit easier. I hope y'all can see this. Let's say you're coming through and you hit this first gate. All right, so if you hit this first gate, let me move back here. It might be a little easier. So let's say you come through and you hit this first gate. All right, and let's say you can't continue forward for some reason. You reverse back you still have to get progression on this gate before you can move to the next set. And this gate is still alive, this gate is dead. Now, you only have to have, you'll have the two, the driver, front and rear for this gate, progression points, and the passenger front and rear for this gate. So the left-handed gate goes for the driver's wheels, the right-handed gate goes for the passenger side wheels. So in order to get the points, those tires have to pass through this plane. If you hit this one, or if you straddle it, then that would be a hit gate. But these two tires on the passenger side would have cleared the plane. 
So therefore you would receive progression for this one. This would be a hit, but you would progress the gate and be able to go to the next set of gates. You have to have at least one front and one rear on the same side of the truck progress through the plane in order to move on to the next set of gates. I know it seems a little complicated sometimes, but it's not. It's really easy. If all four tires go through the plane, they get a negative 10. Negative five, negative five, it's negative 10. If they hit this gate and these tires go through, then the driver's front and rear tire would have passed through the plane with cleanly. They would get progression to the next gate. This would be a plus five because they hit it. And this would be a negative five because they cleared it. If they come through and let's say we had them set kind of close and maybe they wrecked from the one before and they hit both sets of gates. All right, both sets of gates are hit. That's plus 10 and take a rollover. That's plus five. Let's say they back up. And depending on what class, there could be points for that. Now they still can't move on and go around this obstacle and go to the next. In order to go from this gate, which is we'll call this gate one to gate two, you have to have at least two tires, one front, one rear, from the same side of the vehicle, pass through the plane. So they can straddle this side, they can straddle this side, or they could come straight through. It wouldn't matter. It won't change their points any, but that's what is required in order to make it to the next set of gates. If they cannot, then they would just be stuck here trying to do that until their time ran out. Which brings me to another point that we'll get to in just a second. So let's go over one more time. Each gate, whether it's a bonus gate or a regular gate, is worth five points. Either negative five if you clear it, or positive five if you hit it. You cannot go to gate two until at least two tires go through the plane. In order to receive negative 10, which is negative five and negative five, all four tires must clear the plane before they can go to the next one. If you've already hit a gate, then that negative 10 is out the window. It doesn't matter if you have four or two, it's just you have to at least get the side that is still active Though that side, if it's the right handed be the passenger, if it's the left hand be the driver, must go through the plane. So it's pretty simple. People ask about, do the, we'll use these big ones for this. People ask, do the gates go to the sky? Well, that's kind of a trick question. So I don't count the gates to the sky. However, I do count the progression. So the example that I'm trying to give is, yes, if you had, if you were using these gates, then I guess for all intents and purposes, they would kind of go to the sky because this vehicle is so small. And if the cab reaches over and hits one, that would count. However, let's change to the small gates and look at a different situation. So let's say you have these little small gates here set up I'm gonna face this towards you. Let me just put it on this paper so it's easier to see. If this was the case and you come through, and let's say your two front tires are clearing the plane, but this rear tire, maybe you've lost control, comes through and comes over. Okay, and let's say you don't even wreck and it comes back down. Well, only three, only three tires cleared the plane. The way I score, they can either take the negative, the, the hit for this gate, if they want to, or they can circle back around and try it again. Because the while the gate doesn't go to the sky, and the reason for that is 
they can call it a gate and move on if they want to. So if your tire comes through like this and it didn't come through the plane, then that would be a gate because it, it doesn't go to the sky, but you didn't progress all four tires through. <clears throat> now, like I said, if you want to allow people to circle back around and hit it again, you can. It's probably just as easy to call it a gate. Um, but the reason why I do the rule like this, and it's a pretty simple reason, um, maybe it's complicated, maybe it's not. For one thing, it's hard to gauge. So, you know, if somebody's coming through fast, you could call a gate when it's not. Uh, somebody could come through, you know, and flip-flop through, you know, it's up to you. You could, you know, if we want to, at some point we could say you must come through controlled. That's something that Sork is adding, uh, and that's a good rule. There's nothing wrong in it. Um, I like to gear my comps to where they're easy for new people or novices uh, and still be challenging for the uh, pro drivers alike. So the reason why I don't want to say the gates go to the sky as far as in wording, because if it does, if you're on a side hill and we've got a small gate set here and your truck body broke that, maybe you're up like this and you're clearing the gate, no problem. But look, if it goes to the sky, your body is hitting that, that plane. So technically you, if it goes to the sky, then you would have hit this gate. And that is uh, very hard when a truck is moving uh, to prove, and if you're not video on it, it can cause a lot of troubles. So it's a lot easier if someone comes through like this and you know that they have not cleared that gate with all four tires to either say they progressed with two points and the gate is hit, or if you wanna let them go back through to try to get progression on this gate because it's not been hit yet. I'm fine either way. And it, you can even leave it up to the driver. And when left up to the driver, then it takes it off of the judge and guess who it puts it back onto? The driver. So if you let the driver decide, if you tell the driver, hey, no, you didn't hit the gate, but you didn't progress it. You can either go back and, and go through it again or uh, you have to uh, take a penalty point. If it's a hard gate, they may just go ahead and take the penalty point. If it's an easy gate, maybe they'd want to come back and try it again. Like I said, it's going to take more time if they have to do that. Um, you can only go through the gate in the direction that is intended. Uh, so you can't back up through the gate and then pull forward. Um, some places, uh, I haven't, for me, I set my to where you have to go through Ford. So the front tires must enter the gate first, followed by the rear. Some places don't care if you go backwards through a gate, as long as you progress the gate in the direction that is intended, meaning this way. <laughs> uh, so you couldn't even pull through this way unless the gates are dead. Once two gates are cleared, they're dead. So you can go back. If someone wants to back into one, there's no penalty. Once the gates are progressed, they're cleared. Um, once a gate is hit, that gate is dead. So there isn't any more penalty points for that. I hope that's not too confusing. And I know it can be a new concept for people, uh, but it's pretty straightforward and you'll get the gist of it. The more that you comp and the more that you judge, uh, it makes it easier to understand. Reverses. I only count reverses in either sorker classes or in my pro classes. I only count reverses in pro stock, pro mod, or super pro mod which have a play off of class one, two, and three without all the rules. It's just pure competition trucks. Um, that's for another video. Uh, but anyway, 
novice sportsman, uh, big body stock or full body stock, um, 124 scale. I don't count reverses on those courses. Um, the reason why I don't count uh, reverses except on the pro classes is because uh, they're set up for uh, people that are new to the hobby. Uh, it's very frustrating for somebody that's new coming into the hobby to get points deducted for reversing. Um, I don't do a point out. I want people to finish my courses. I don't want a bunch of DNFs at the end. I don't want a whole bunch of people getting perfect runs. I want the courses to be challenged or challenging. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want them to be so challenging for the driver or the trucks that the gates are set up for uh, that it discourages people uh, from wanting to, uh, uh, to enter the competition. I do competitions so that I have fun and so that the people that I set up the competitions for have fun. I want them to be challenging. I want people to hit gates. It's fun to set the gates and I want them to hit gates. Uh, but I don't want them to hit every gate and I want the, the course to progress from one gate to the next, which we'll talk about in a minute. But nevertheless, uh, so that's the way that part of it works. So if there is a reverse penalty, I have my drivers call out reverse. It takes a while to get people used to it. Have people call out their reverses. So when they reverse, say reverse, you know, instruct them to call on it. Uh, you could even do a double penalty on someone if they reversed without reversing. Uh, that would be an option that you could enforce if you were having trouble uh, at the competitions you're putting on. But for the most part, I don't count reverses if the if they just barely roll back. I'm not going to count a reverse if somebody just barely rolls back. Uh, you know, but if they go more than uh, if they reverse under the power of their own truck, I count a reverse. If they uh, roll back more than probably half a tire, you know, maybe even a quarter tire, you know, then I'm going to count that as a reverse. Uh, but if they just barely roll back and move forward, I don't count that as a reverse. Uh, these are RC cars, you know. Uh, there's different there's different things that causes different uh, situations to come up that sometimes they'll be a little slop there. It could roll back, just a fuzz. But like I said, I don't want people to take advantage of the rule. You know, like I said, a quarter to a half, and then I count the reverse. Whether they call it or not, then I'll say, you know, that's a reverse. The judge is always right. You know, um, they can't argue with the judge. Uh, anybody caught cheating, I give a thousand point penalty to every class they run uh, for the day. So that's a pretty hefty penalty and nobody wants to get a thousand points added. They're going to be dead last. Uh, so that keeps people from cheating um, or it seems to help. All right. So if there's a rollover, if your truck rolls over, roll the truck over, that's five points. The judge probably should do that. Uh, the truck needs to be rolled over in a way um, that's possible. If the truck is in a situation to where it can't be rolled over, say you're in a big ravine or something, and there's just nowhere that you can possibly roll over, then a rollover is not possible, and they must take a reposition. Um, I don't consider turtled. Uh, or being flat at the top, not being able to roll over. I just roll it over like this, or I roll it over like this. And I have no problem in rolling the truck over like this, or like this. So any four directions, I'm fine with. Now that doesn't mean you can just caddy corner and place your truck at the best possible angle on a rollover. 
north, east, south, and west, you know, uh, use the whatever direction the truck is pointing, uh, for an example, to be your north bearing if you want to, uh, and then use those four directions or that cross that it makes to roll the truck over, and then they can go from there. All right, the next one is repair. A rollover is plus five points, by the way, the same as a hit gate. If someone, maybe their battery comes out, their wheel falls off, uh, you know, if um, maybe a bolt falls off or something, their batteries go dead in their remote. If they need to make a repair, that's 10 points. They pick the truck up, take it off and bring it back and set it back down. Uh, you can have them set it back down at the last gate to clear or if you want to have them set it back down where it was, that's fine too. Uh, but anyhow, that's plus 10 points um, for that. The next one is a little different, and that's the reposition. <clears throat> and I'll go over this with you. So we got two sets of gates. We're going to set up here, and I'm going to set the first two here. And I'm going to set the next two over here. All right. So let's say you're coming through and you clear this set of gates clean. Oh, I hit that one, but we're going to pretend I did it clean. Let's do it again. So let's say you're going through and you clear this set of gates cleanly. Maybe there's a steep hill here or for whatever reason, you can't get to the next location. Maybe you're on your side, okay, and you've turned over you can call for a reposition. In my classes, and we'll go over that in more detail in a minute, you can't winch in all classes. So my repositions are not back to the beginning of the last gate. Instead, it is the beginning of the next gate that you're about to go to. So you can set your truck, and I'm gonna reverse these gates again. So this time, this will be the gates we're going to. This is the gates that we're clearing. So if we clear here and we roll over or we just can't make it up the hill, whatever it might be, they can call for a reposition. That reposition costs 10 points. The gates are still live. So there's still a possible negative or possible positive five points for these gates and they get to move to the plane with the front tires so that they can travel on through the, the gate. If they take a reposition, they should be able to make it through uh, the gates. Now they may still hit one, that's fine, but they should be able to be able to progress to the next set of gates. That's what the reposition is for. Why do I do that instead of going back to the old set of gates? We're getting ready to get into that. And that's with the winches. Winches are one point. Only the pro classes, well, I take it back. Sportsmen and, uh, sportsmen and pro mod and super pro mod have winching. Pro Stock doesn't have winching. None of the other novice classes have winching. Uh, you can basically look at sportsmen as uh, a training ground for pro mod. Um, we have other rules in place there where you can't just camp out and sportsmen the rest of your life, um, or at least ways not and be winning. So you have to. It's a class that you graduate out of in Dino RC. But nevertheless, the reason that we have that that way for the winching is if you take and you're in a class that you can't winch and you can't clear the gate, then you're stuck. You know, in the lower classes, there's like a 10 minute uh, time uh, limit for the novice and newer guy classes. So if you can't make it through those gates for some reason, maybe old Dino set the gate too hard. It happens. I try not to set gates that are, uh, you know, require a winch to make it through. 
fuzz. Sometimes people have their trucks badly set up, and sometimes it's a you know there is a little. It could be a trickier gate. But if there is, then they are able instead of to time out because I don't want them to DNF. I want them to finish, but they still need a penalty if they if their truck can't make it. So they get that repop, which is a plus ten, which is a lot. And they still may hit a gate when they go through. So that could be another plus five or another plus five if they hit both of them. And then that would be plus 20. Uh, so anyway, so it's not for free. They've basically, if they have to repop, they've basically wasted the points that they could have gotten through this gate and they still have to clear the gate. Uh, the penalty points are still there. If they clear them cleanly, then it cost them zero, but they didn't get any negative points. You know, so if someone else comes through and cleared it cleanly, they would get a negative 10 because they didn't take a, a repop. So it cost them 10 points to do uh, the repop. A few strategies can be taken advantage of uh, with the repop. Um, if someone is on gate nine and here's gate 10 and this is the finish line, as soon as they progress gate nine and there's 20 seconds left on the clock, they could call repop and be, even if it was at the other end of the track, they could move their truck to the beginning of the next, the next and last gate, if it was gate 10, and then drive on through to, to save, you know, to, to not DNF. Again, some people says, well, that's not fair. I don't want my drivers at my competitions to DNF unless there's nothing else that we can do about it. Now, let's go over the DNF and did not start. Uh, so did not finish and did not start penalties. My penalties for did not finish is plus 100. You still count all the other points that happened. It's not a point out. You can get more than plus 100. But if somebody does not finish the course, they will receive plus 100 points. If someone does not start the event, they will get 100 points for did not start and 100 points for did not finish. So that would be for a total of 200 points. Why do you do that? That's so someone can't come in. Uh, maybe they break down. Uh, you know, maybe they had a clean run all the way up to gate nine and their battery exploded and their truck caught fire and burnt to the ground. <laughs> you know, there's no way to fix it. Well, some people say, well, they made it through all those gates without hitting anything. Well, they did, but, you know, this is a competition, and it's a timed competition, so it's a race. The time isn't as important as the points, but the time is important, so it is a race. And you can't have somebody win a race that did not finish. You could have somebody in NASCAR lead every lap until the last one, and they could crash and not make it across the finish line, and they would finish dead last. It's the same principle. You cannot finish first, you know, uh, if you uh, do not finish the race. You know, you should not podium if you did not finish, unless everybody did not finish. So I hope that clears that up and, and makes it, uh, you know, pretty easy to understand. All right, so we still have gate progression, which we've already went over, negative five per gate. So that makes a negative 10 per per side and then we have time and like I said when a driver starts their time you know you can set up different ways you can either have the time start when they clear this gate or what a lot of people do some people even make a little starting area and as soon as the driver starts into that area they start the time just make sure everybody is starting at the same location and you start the time at the same location. 
That's really all that's important. So, if we're we're clear on the time, uh, like I said, 10 minutes for the classes uh, under pro. Pro classes should be, depending on the gates that are set, more than likely eight to seven minutes. Uh, they should be able to move a little faster. Um, you do want the time to be a little bit of an issue in the pro classes. Um, like I said, I still want them to finish the course, but I don't want them to be able to take 10 minutes to finish the course. I want them to have to be under a little bit of pressure of the clock to get done. But at the same time, I don't want them to DNF. Usually what I do is I'll take the time of the first person. And if I think the gates look like I, you know, if I think it should be able to be ran in seven minutes, then I'll say it's a seven minute start on the clock. If they don't finish in seven, then if the first driver doesn't finish in seven, then we'll make it an eight minute and give them that extra minute. And then everybody will get eight. If the first driver clears it in seven, we know it's possible. I'll let everybody do it at seven. So that's usually the way I do my time and it makes it pretty simple. All right, so now we're gonna look at scoring and I may have to do this a little differently and do it on, on my PC, but so I'm gonna write down the driver name and I'm just gonna write down Dino. That's me. And then under the bonus gate, let's say I'm driving along and I clear the bonus. All I do, and I'm gonna have a little bit of a change made to my uh, bonus gate columns to where there's actually a B, a B with one line and a B with an X. I don't have that yet, but that's what I write down. So if they clear both gates, then I put down a B just like that, meaning that they got the bonus. And I know the bonus is worth negative five per gate. So that would be a negative 10. You can even jot down negative 10 beside it if you want to real fast. If they get one side, then I'll draw a line through the B. That line represents one hit gate. And then I'll know instantly when I go to add up the scores that a B with a line through it equals zero. If they hit both the bonus gates, I'll draw an X through the B. And if an X is in the B, then I know that is plus 10 because they hit both sides of the bonus. The bonus gate is set up, I usually set my bonus gate up either somewhere extremely hard or I set my bonus gate up somewhere that is pretty far away from the finish line or from uh, an intended area for so that they have, would, will have to uh, exhaust, you know, 30 seconds or more of time to, to, to get that bonus points to try it, to make it a little more scary to try it. Sometimes we'll set up an easier bonus gate, but generally I like to have fun with the bonus gate and I think a bonus gate should be challenging. It should be challenging either because it's going to take more time and you're gambling whether or not you're going to have enough time to make it through the 10th gate or I'd have it more challenging because it's a gate that would be easy to hit uh, and you're challenging whether or not you can get through it. If you only hit one side, you've lost nothing but time. If you hit both sides, then you've lost points and time. But if you clear it, then you've gained uh, negative points, which is awesome, uh, but you still gain a little bit of time. The next one would be reverse, and reverses are easy. I'm gonna pretend like this is a pro mob, which it's not, this is 24 scale, but I'm gonna pretend like it's a pro mob and I'm counting reverses, and they got uh, five reverses. Actually, I'm gonna say six, let's do seven reverses. So I just do four lines with a line through it. It's pretty standard knowing that that's five and then two little lines uh, for the next two, which is seven. That makes it easy to count up at the end of the night. If all you do is put little lines, 
they run in together. It makes it harder to count. It's a lot better to do four than put a line through for the fifth one so that you know that there's five points. Don't try to count them up on your head. Put them down. If you're judging, be honest. Watch the trucks. You're there to do a job. It's not fair if you're talking to people around you and not paying attention to the truck. Take your job seriously as a judge and judge the trucks fairly and correctly. It's important. Yes, it's just little trucks. Oftentimes it's grown men with little trucks, but it's sometimes it's kids with, with little trucks. But it's important uh, that we judge them correctly. Nobody wants to win, uh, you know, if they didn't deserve it. Nobody wants to lose if they didn't deserve it. So, you know, it's if you're honest, you don't have to, you know, some people might say, oh, he's a tough judge. Well, I'm not being tough. I'm being an honest judge. I don't want them to necessarily get points. I mean, I do because as a track uh, designer, I like to see people, you know, uh, sometimes have to hit a gate or something. I say, oh, I've done that one good. Uh, made it tricky. Uh, but the, I want everybody to do good. I'm rooting for everybody to do good. Um, the next thing is winching. Same thing. We're going to say the winch three times. I'm going to put three little sticks. One other thing about winching in Dino RC, you can use a winch stick. Uh, you can also use, uh, you know, put your land anchor on, uh, you know, on a rock. You know, hook it into a crevice, a natural uh, thing there. Um, I don't let somebody just, uh, you know, hook it to a person per se. However, um, you know, if you're, if, as long as you make it clear in the beginning, if you want to let a spotter or someone hold uh, that winch into position, I'm fine with that. I am fine with the spotter hooking up the winch. The reason being is that's the way it is in the world of rock crawling. If they have a spotter, guess what that spotter's going to do? He's going to hook up the winch. The driver stays in the truck. So, it also helps with people that may have disabilities so that they can uh, get their truck hooked up and they won't have any worry about falling on the rocks. So that they don't have to have a spotter do it. They can do it themselves if they want. But the thing to remember is the gates are live. So if a spotter has a winch and they hit a gate, that's a penalty. So if someone's going to use a spotter and they're going to let somebody hook up their winch, if they hit the gate with the string or they step on it, that's going to count. The gates behind it are dead, so they don't count. Um, but that's that makes it easy and makes it fair. All right, so the next one is gate hit. So again, if somebody hits that gate, all I'm going to do is put down a line for gate hit. See that one? All right, let's pretend like they hit five gates. Let's say three gates. Let's say they hit three gates. All right, I put down a three, and that's it. Just one, two, three. Three little marks. If they'd hit five, I'd done four with a line through it. Roll over. We're going to say they had one roll over. Not going to have any repairs, so I'm going to leave it blank. Not going to have any repositions, so I'm going to leave that blank. They didn't have a DNF, and they did start, so they didn't get a DNS, DNS uh, penalty. Now we look at gate progression, and we see the negative 5 per. I don't fill this out on the way. There's no need to mark down gates that are progressed. And I'll explain that in just a second. But what you can do is up at the top where it says gate progression, if someone did not finish, then I would put the last gate that they progressed. Not the next gate, but the gate they progressed. So if they progressed seven, I would put a seven up here on gate progression. And I'll explain that in just a second. At the end of it, you're going to call time if you're the judge and the timekeeper will give you the points or if you're being the judge and the timekeeper 
you'll write down the time. Now it's time to add up the points. <clears throat> well, so on this one, they lost points on the bonus because we've got a B with a X to it. So they got a plus 10. <coughs> they had seven reverses. So that's a plus seven. They had three winches. So that's a plus three. They hit three gates. So that's a plus 15. They had one rollover, so that's a plus five. They didn't have any repairs, repositions. All right, and now we've gone to gate uh, progression. Now, I'm going to forget about the seven, and I marked it out. Let's say they finished, but it would work the same way if they didn't. Well, if they finished, and there's ten gates, the bonus gate does not count in the progression gate total. It's a bonus gate. If you set 10 gates, then there are a total of 20 gates to be progressed. So you got two gates per gate per, you have two cones per gate, if you will, uh, or whatever you're using, tennis balls, it doesn't matter, whatever you're using for your gates. You've got one on each side and it takes both of them to make up a gate. So that means that there are 20 possible so it's real easy for me to know that if they hit three gates, then they cleared 17. So I just take 17 and I times that by negative five. And that's going to give me a negative 85. All right, now I just scribbled that out. But an easy way to do that uh, is you know that 20 times five is 100. Sometimes it's easier to count backwards. So if they hit three gates, guess what? That's 15 points. They're gonna have a negative 85. Um, if they'd hit four, it'd be negative 80. If they hit five, it'd be negative 75 because five times five is 25. So it's, it's real easy to do that part into your head so I'll go ahead and gate progression and I'm going to give them, they hit three, so that'd be plus, they hit three, so that would be neg negative five times 17, negative 85. Now, we have all of our things down here and if you want to use a calculator, you can, but I usually just do it in my head or kind of scribble, scrabble here with a pencil. So we've got 10, plus seven, plus three. I know that's 20. So there's 20 plus 15. That's uh, 20 or 35 plus five more. Hey, guess what? That is a lot of, I don't forgot. So let's add up the scores. So bonus gate, we have plus 10. Reverses is plus seven. Winch is plus three. I know that's plus 20 when you add it together. Gate hit is another 15. So 15 plus 20 is 35. Five more points for a rollover makes it 40. So we have 10, 20, 35, 40. And I come over here to their uh, line and I'll negative 85 plus 40. And then I'll come to the total score, and I know that is negative 45. It makes it real easy to add up in your head because you're dealing with a lot of fives. All right, so I hope this clears it up. You know, maybe there's some other questions. Uh, it's pretty simple to add these up this way. You're not having to keep up with how many gates they uh, actually progressed. Uh, you only have to keep up with how many gates they hit. And then it's real easy just to minus, you know, the number they hit from the total possible amount of gates and come up with that number of progression points. Had they only cleared to seven, then that would have been 14 uh, that they would have had total and they would have hit three. So that would have been 11 that they would have had. So... Let's see, it's been 
if they'd only cleared seven, that would have been 14 uh, possible gates. If they hit three of those, that's right. That would have been minus three. That would have left them 11 they cleared, and that would have been 55 negative on the progression side of it. And they would have lost those other points that they didn't get, which would have been 30 more points, which would have put them to a negative 15, I believe. But nevertheless, hopefully this cleared it all up. Hopefully it makes it easy for you. Uh, I have these available. Uh, like I said, I'm happy to send you the file and you can print them out. Uh, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. I think this is a pretty good scoring system. Uh, you have to be able to keep score. Uh, and it's a simple way to do it. And I think it's a fair way to do it. And it's a fun way to do it. Uh, anyway, you never know. I might just see you on the rocks.